crypto sell off with the stock market. I have a big downside move coming later this year in the stock market. And that's going to be the catalyst to really take us to that 12, 13,000 marker. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this mind blowing interview, Gareth Soloway reveals his best market to invest in, Bitcoin and Ethereum price predictions, and much more on the US economy. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin price attempted an upside correction above the USD 21,500 level. However, BTC failed to continue higher above USD 21,750. It is currently declining and remains at a risk of a move below USD 21,000. On the upside, the price might face resistance near the USD 21,750 level. The next resistance is near the USD 22,000 level, above which the bulls might attempt a steady increase. Similarly, most major altcoins are moving lower. ETH could accelerate lower below the USD 1,550 support zone. XRP is at risk of a move to USD 0.305. ADA may perhaps decline below the USD 0.45 support. But in terms of talking to people and saying follow the herd, you never want to be a follower of the herd. Occasionally it works. It gives you a false sense of security. Generally, when you're following people, you're going to end up losing, especially when it's the herd mentality. Um, the smart money gets in at the beginning of the run, the dumb money later on, and you never want to be in that crowd that's chasing at the end. So avoid the hype, essentially. What was going on over the summer is, is number one, the markets had started to bottom and we started to have this kind of turnaround in the equity markets mm -hmm. where it was becoming a risk on environment. And what you notice is the meme stocks ran just at the end as the S&P was topping out here. And if we go to the S&P chart, it's getting crushed today again, just like it did on Friday. But look at the chart here. I mean, this is this was just this is the beauty of the charts, uh, David. And I know, you know, I'm a technical chartist, uh, but look at the level we ran into. We had this monster move up right to the 200 moving average, right to this down sloping trend line and right to this gap fill. I call that a three factor resistance line. And that is is a beautiful thing. It basically choreographed we were going to roll over and you can see the meme stocks kind of ran into that and then we've seen that fall as well. So again, the charts tell you a lot about what the probabilities are and they were saying we were going to come down or start to fall in the markets. If you were trading AMC and you got caught up in the hype and let's suppose you were trading on rumors that it was going to get squeezed because you were following the Wall Street Bets group and you started trading sometime in early August. At what point should you start looking at the charts and decide to sell? I mean, that huge run up, did it give if you just isolated that vertical jump from uh, that pointer that you were just uh, that you just had all the right. way to the top at any point during that climb? Did that chart indicate to you a definitive sell pattern? Yeah. So, so number one, look at the 200 moving average here. And this is the key folks is that if you're in these trades, that's all fine and good. And if you're in the money, there's no reason you have to get all the way out. But what you want to do is you want to play it smart. You want to take a little bit off the table. As you hit a resistance line, take a little bit off. When you hit the next one, take a little bit off. So in this situation at the 200 moving average, that would have been smart to take a little bit off the table and then you can let the rest run. And then what I want to show you here, and again, I'm just, I'm just looking at this, but, but look at this trend line here. I mean, really you had a great trend line connecting these highs and really right around there is where you saw it stall out. So the 200 MA right here, you just kind of take a little bit off. And what we, we say, you know, in, in the crypto markets, it's called a moon bag where it's kind of all just the profit at that point. That's fine if you want to leave that on, on the table. I don't like to do it myself because I like putting money and banking it. But again, at least in that scenario, you're taking some off the table, taking a little bit more and you're lowering your risk as these stocks get more into ludicrous levels. I'm just a shorter term macro and now, you know, macro economist looking at the cycles and everything like that. So the beauty of 12 to 13,000, it gets us to that 80 to 85 percent correction that Bitcoin has done every single cycle. Uh, so that kind of gives us a basis of what to look for. It's also a strong technical support. But you're right. I mean, if you're a long term investor and you're not going to look at it for 10 years or five years, there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to. This is the key, right? You have to be able to weather the emotional storm, because I know a lot of investors 
investors out there, they might buy in at 22 or 21. And when they're down 40% at 12, they might panic and unload because you're going to hear a lot of negativity out there. And if you, you have to be able to control that and, and shut it out, and then you're okay to do that. But if you're someone who's very emotional and you're going to exit the trade at that point, and then it goes to 50,000, then a hundred thousand, that's not a good scenario for you to be in. So if you have emotional control, that's fine. Start inching in. I also advocate for dollar cost averaging. Buy a little here at 21, buy a little bit more at 18, buy some more at 15 and so forth versus just going all in at one specific level. If you note that the Bitcoin has thus far been correlated with the NASDAQ and if you assume this correlation holds, well, should the Ethereum merge, which some are saying is one of the greatest, most important crypto events in the history of crypto since the beginning of Bitcoin, can that actually make a price divergence between the crypto markets and the stock markets, you think? Well, that's a good question. I, I don't think so. Not at this stage of Bitcoin's life cycle. I think down the line, you will see a, a kind of a difference and, and Bitcoin and the crypto markets start to emerge. But right now it is tied to a risk asset. I know a lot of people said in 2021, oh, it has nothing to do with the stock market. It'll go up when inflation goes up and the markets sell off. We obviously learned that that wasn't the case. So I'm in the camp that we're going to see uh, crypto sell off with the stock market. I have a big downside move coming later this year in the stock market. Market. And that's going to be the catalyst to really take us to that 12, 13,000 marker on Bitcoin. And I actually think that Ethereum is very likely going to head down to this next target around $6, $645. So I have it priced in. That should be the, the level that Ethereum hits when Bitcoin hits 12 to 13,000. How did you come up with that yellow line? Uh, key major support. It was the beginning of the big bull market. This would be 100% retrace to the start of that bull market. Major support right here as well. And we've seen the dollar basically up to a double top up here. But look at the run on the dollar basically since that move from the Fed or since the, the minutes came out. And that is putting major pressure. The, the stock market does not like a strong dollar. It wants a stable or slightly weaker dollar. And that, again, is problematic here for the market. So as long as the dollar is going higher, it's telling you that, again, investors are, are moving away from stocks. And that's why we're seeing the selling that we're seeing. That's interesting. Why do, you, why do you say that the stock markets don't like a stronger dollar? If you look at the S&P 500, for example, most of the companies are export oriented, where have most of the revenues from overseas. Wouldn't a stronger dollar actually help their top line? No, it's, it's actually the opposite, right? So, so if, you, if you sell in terms of yen or euros and then you convert it back, right? So you're taking in yen or euros and between that period of the conversion back into dollars, the dollar strengthens. So you're actually getting less out of it. And we've okay. seen even stocks like IBM, companies like IBM, they took a $3 billion hit because of the currency issues here. So, so it's kind of wacky how that's working right now, but it, it is definitely a headwind. And I think it's important to understand what does a strong dollar mean? It means people are going into the US dollar for safety. And what they're doing here is they're saying, all right, the Fed is gonna drive us into recession. And therefore, and they're not lightening up, even though we know the economy is weakening per economic data. And so they're hiding in the dollar. They're selling risk assets that might be affected by a weaker economy. And that, again, is a, is a kind of an issue that the markets are very freaked out about right now. So you're saying the bear market is back from summer vacation. We're not going to yeah, see. Not only that, but I'll even even make a bolder call for you today. Okay. I say that the stock market has made the highs of 2021. We will not take those highs out for five to 10 years. OK, I hope, um, are you speechless? Yeah, <laughs> just uh, I'm not trying to make a dramatic pause. I'm just trying to think about what to say. Um, OK, I'm, often, I'm not often speechless, but OK. Um, five to 10 years. OK, well, I have to ask you about that. So uh, we've talked about this briefly last time. Five to 10 years. What is your rationale for uh, a stock market that's not going to uh, breach new all time highs. That has to be based on some sort of fundamental analysis as well, then. Yes, correct, correct. So it's technical and fundamental. Uh, the fundamental side is basically that you're going to have this genie that's out of the bottle named inflation. It's not going to go back to 2% or under for a long, long time. That's going to mean that the Federal Reserve is not going to be able to print us out of the future recessions that are going to come, especially this next one. And therefore, you're going to have this market and this economy that's mired in more of a stagflation period. So slightly higher inflation, but really no growth to speak of.
love and it's going to last for years. So you're going to have this digestion period. I think what we're going to go through is much like what the Chinese market, the Shanghai and the uh, Hang Seng has gone through and the Brazilian stock market, which are both my favorite areas to invest right now. Let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the Hang Seng here. I want to show this because it's super, super important. So think about this and we go to the Hang Seng here. Here you have the monthly chart. The Hang Seng currently is still trading at levels that were seen back in 2006 and close to levels seen in the 2000s. So if you look at that, the high of 2000, we basically just touched it on the Hang Seng market right here. This has been mired in a sideways chop move for the last really 10 to 20 years. The US markets, first of all, look at the vertical move that occurred here and from 2003 to 2007, it's almost a replication of what we've seen in the US markets. And look at how long it's taken to digest that move from the Hang Seng. And if we go to the EWZ, much the same thing here. Look at that chart, 2003 and the vertical move up to 2008 and look at the digestion. I think you're gonna get a breakout on the Brazilian stock market, a breakout on the Hang Seng and the US markets will now go into that same sort of longer term consolidation pattern that we've seen in these markets for the last 10, 20 years. Yeah, so, so I think the key is understanding for everyone watching that, that if the world crumbles, meaning that if China crumbles because their real estate market's crumbling, if Europe crumbles because of natural gas and, and Russia, basically what's going on is people will flood into the dollar. So my thinking is that people are over anticipating that. And my guess is number one, we've heard that China's already cutting interest rates multiple times. They're stimulating their economy. My guess is, again, we're gonna see natural gas. I have a key level on natural gas that shows it's likely gonna to top out. And so I think people are actually over anticipating these events. And when it comes and when it doesn't come to fruition, that's gonna be also a trigger for the dollar. In fact, let me let me bring up the natural so gas chart. I wanna show you You're this. kind of saying uh, this might be priced in. Yeah, yeah, I think it okay. is. I honestly think it is. And in fact, if we look at the, the natural gas chart, there's this from early 20 or late 2021, look at this channel and how every time we hit the upper line, it sells off, sells off. And look at this, I mean, this was an epic sell off, but look yeah. at how close we are to hitting that again. In fact, that's for me, I'm gonna look to short that on natural gas. I will be pulling the trigger on a short on natural gas, obviously proper allocation in my portfolio, but that to me is a no brainer that it should be running into resistance here. And just to show you the power of these channels, which are parallel lines that charts seem to stick in between, take a look at the US oil chart from a while back. And I wanna just get yeah. rid of uh, some of these extra lines so you guys can really uh, zone in on this. But this is remarkable, right? So if we go to your weekly chart, actually let's go to the monthly chart, look at the parallel and how it marked the top on oil. If you remember, Paul, when we were yep. at 130, everyone was calling for 150, $200 a barrel. And what did it do? It tagged the Flash upper down. end, which was perfectly parallel to these lows here and oil collapsed back down. So I use these in my trading in every day and it is amazingly powerful to utilize it and to be able to call tops and bottoms. August and early September, the volume is very, very light in the stock market and crypto. So you get a lot of these kind of crazy moves. So that's why I'm kind of questioning, is this drop we're seeing right now the beginning or is it going to come in a couple weeks or a month from now? But I do think that ultimately within a month and a half to two months, we are fully in that next leg lower in crypto as a whole. And I do think for me, at least, I still have that 12, 13,000 price target, which happens to be a, a, what I call a measured move, taking the initial move from 69 down to 32 ish. And then the bounce high from 48 measured out to equal that first drop would take us to about 12. While the upcoming ETH merge is one of the most anticipated events in the crypto community at the moment, it's not free from hiccups. However, Ethereum developers are quick to respond to the issues that arise. Peter Silji, an Ethereum software developer, has announced on Twitter that they have found a regression that results in a corrupted state. He explained that it was probably one of the pull requests that had merged toward the new storage model or online printer. In a later update, the developer highlighted that the problem will likely affect those who are running the release in terms of corrupting their database and resulting in the loss of data. He added that the issue of data loss happens on shutdown, and this is why their tests were unable to catch the bug. Despite the issues, the developers were able to provide a fix after a day. If you enjoy this highlight videos, 
please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.